Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here. Welcome to Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers. Now, these are some supplemental videos that I have done to kind of show you how I finished off a few of the designs that are actually in the book, Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers, Volume 2. And in this video, we are going to talk about the Iron Man text effect in Chapter 2. Now, if you remember where we left off in the book was we got this far as far as adding the text and um, all the various effects around it. Now I just wanted to add some atmospheric elements just, 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 just to really kind of finish it off. And the first thing was this spark element. Now this is actually just a simple snapshot, actually was an accident um, at a fireworks show that my family had taken and saw the sparks in the image and thought it would make a great effect for this. So this is uh, why it's not a good idea to just discard an image because it might be a mistake or something like that. You never know what you might be able to use it for. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and make it a background element. So I'm just going to drag and drop it, and it falls behind my text. Now, you'll notice <clears throat> that already it looks pretty good. Actually, the, the spark effect works, and we can still read the text and everything just fine, and you could probably leave it as such. But I actually like to kind of push things in the background and make them feel, feel like they're further than they are. So we're just going to run a very simple blur on this, but not just a normal Gaussian blur, but rather a motion blur. So we'll go ahead and choose blur, motion blur, and we'll set the angle at about 25, 28, something like that. And the distance I'm going to keep very small. In fact, I just had, want it to have a kind of a hint of movement. I don't want to blur it like crazy, as you see right that, and that just gives me that streaky look. Now I'm going to keep it really low, so it has this kind of hint of movement, almost like a motion blur effect on it. And we'll just adjust that angle a little bit. And, I'm, and notice I'm adjusting the angle to kind of match the um, speed and angle of the graphic itself. So I think that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and click OK. All right. So there's my background. Now, if you think it's a little, still a little bit overbearing, it's OK. It's on its own layer. So we can just uh, back that opacity out, uh, off just a little bit. And there we go. Now, need to add the lens flare element. Now, there's a number of different ways to go about applying a lens flare. And here I have this image of a lens flare. It's actually a stock image. And just want to show you a couple of ways of going about applying it. Now, in the book, I talk about how you can take a static image, be it from video or a photograph, and convert that into a flare brush. And I'll show you that again in just a moment. But if you wanted to do this quick and easy and just use this flare this one time, Here's a quick and easy trick, just drag and drop it on over, and we'll position it at the top of the layer stack here, and then position it off screen, and simply change the blend mode to screen, so it makes all the dark areas invisible, and leaves only the flare visible, we can position it anywhere we like, and then we ultimately get that finished effect. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and make it a brush, we'll just do this one more time. Now over here in the original stock image for the flare, I'm going to go ahead and remove the color. Just press Shift Command U or Shift Control U if you're on Windows, and you'll see that it takes the color out. Now I'm also going to invert the image by pressing Command or Control I, and you'll see it uh, gives me that kind of negative. Now I'm just going to make a little bit of a levels adjustment and just tighten up the white background areas and then punch up the contrast just ever so slightly because I need that background to be pure white whenever I turn it into a brush. So everything looks pretty good, so we'll go under the Edit menu, go down here to Define Brush Preset, and go ahead and give it a name if you like. I'll just call this Flare 1. It's not Flare 1, I have many flares, but that's okay. And then now it's defined as a brush. So now if I jump back over to my original document, and go and create a new blank layer, and we can go ahead and just grab our brush tool and then scroll down and locate our brush. There it is, the last one applied, and there is my preview. So I'm going to set my foreground color to white and just dab, oh, set my opacity up to 100%, and then just dab right off camera there, and there my flare appears in that white color. Now, you can add to that by simply just adding an outer glow layer style. Let's just give it a kind of a blue flare, very similar to the original, just an outer glow, and we'll go ahead and use those existing settings, and there we go. Now, the beauty of this, of course, um, it looks pretty much like it did a moment ago when we brought it over and changed, simply changed the blend mode, but now it's a brush. I can add multiple elements of this or multiple instances of this on this single layer. If I wanted to add a little bit more flare element coming out of this side, I could go ahead and do that. So I have that option because it's on its own layer and because it's a brush, we can add 
um, as many instances as we want. And of course, that brush is saved into Photoshop and available anytime I need it, which is why it's my preferred method when working with flares like this is go ahead and make it a brush so it's available anytime or simply go ahead and just drag and drop it over and then change the blend mode. But there you have your finished Iron Man text effect right there inside Photoshop.